Hi there and welcome to the 2022 gift list. This is the sixth annual video where I go through a few gift ideas for the folks who are good with their hands. Now because we're all going to be feeling the squeeze a little bit more this year and even if you're not maybe the folks who are buying for you might be. Because of this I'm concentrating more on items that are a little less spendy this year and it's worth mentioning perhaps that whilst some of the products in this video were supplied for review or gifted I've liked them enough to go out and buy more of them for myself or their products that I've swapped for products of my own with other makers. So I'm honestly not sure where that leaves me in terms of declarations, but I've tagged this whole video as a gifted slash ad just to be sure. I'm going to start though with a couple of things that I've listed before and I'm doing that partly because they're items that I'm always getting asked about and partly because they represent just phenomenal value at a very low price. So first up is the hinge drilling guide. I've got a few of these knocking around, I've had them forever. They're used for marking the positions for concealed hinges and hinge plates, but mostly I use it as a saddle square for transferring a mark from a face to an edge or vice versa. It's as square as any more and right square that I own, and it's just fantastic value at £2.25. Uh, next is my favourite awl. It's a small awl. Um, it's a tailor's awl, sometimes called a scratch awl or a ticker's awl. It's got a gourd-shaped handle, and unlike, say, a regular brad awl, these have a particularly thin spike that tapers down gradually to a fine point. So they're useful for all kinds of things where a fine, pointy thing is useful, and at £3.50 for a two-pack, they're just amazing value. Staying with sharp and pointy, let's talk knives. Uh, I'm very happy using a utility knife, an X-Acto knife, but mostly I preferred scalpels. They're a little bit old school, the handles aren't particularly comfortable, and the blades can be a bit of a fiddle to change, which is where this guy comes in. This is the Alpha SAC-1. It's sold as a stainless steel graphics knife. I kind of think of it as a snap-off scalpel with a sharply raked pointed blade that's like a cross between a 10A and a number 11. It's full of glorious design touches like the removable pocket clip that doubles as a blade snapper offer. Of course all this exquisite Japanese design and elegant stainless steel fabrication comes at a price and that price is £6.50. Seriously £6.50 for this is just amazing value and it's not like they're using that to leverage blade sales as a pack of 10 replacement blades is around about a fiver or so. Great knife, great value, and it's been my go-to workshop knife ever since I bought it. Next is the sander card. These are such a great idea. I've mentioned them in previous videos, and we've all made up something like this from a filler knife and double-sided tape, but this is such a great development of that with a Velcro-covered, flexible plastic card that makes abrasive changes really easy. The plastic backer is malleable but always returns back to the flat and it comes in two sizes and at £8 for the 70mm and £9 for the 125mm with a selection of abrasive sheets in different grits. It's a bit of a no-brainer really, a great idea from a British maker. So even in this digital world we need to put our thoughts down on paper periodically and I've been a fan of the Rodia dot book notebooks for a long time but I'm a recent convert to the spiral bound dot book. I'm sure I don't need to explain the benefits of a spiral bound notebook to you so I'll just say that of course the pages are also micro perforated for easy removal and of course they have the usual subtle Rhodia dot pattern to guide you as you draw and around £7 for the A5 plus size and £12 for the A4 plus they won't break the bank either. Uh, next one along is from my YouTube pal Keith Ragonbone Brown. Keith's been making his own wax finishes for a while and has recently added a clear wax to the lineup. I used it recently on the router bench makeover that'll be uh, that video will be out next week, I think, so stay tuned for that. Uh, Keith's finishes are a beeswax-based wax oil. They're thinner than a paste wax, but thicker than liquid beeswax. They go on evenly, it covers really well, and it buffs up to a fantastic, silky smooth finish. A tin costs around £15, and the clear wax is in addition to the original and the food safe formulas. You can pick these up from Keith's Etsy store. Links down below, as always. So where do you even start with a company like Benchdogs? Over the course of this last year, they've continued to innovate and introduce 
top quality products designed and manufactured right here in Britain. Too many to mention overall. The measuring and marking tools are, are amazing. The T-squares in stainless steel, the precision rulers, but it's the accessories in particular that I found most appealing. The end stop on the rulers, for example, and recently these NFT stoppers. If you're an NFT user, then one of the things you'll get used to is dropping things through the holes. I've had a lot of practice with NFT, so it's not something I do very often, but the NFT stoppers are a great way to selectively blank off those holes, yet still have them easily removable with the built-in magnet on the chamfering tool. A pack of 10 MFT stoppers can be had from £12, including that. Uh, be sure to use the offer code 10 Workshop at checkout for a 5% discount across the board at Benchdogs.co UK. If you've been on Instagram or YouTube recently, another British company that you'll have seen around is O3 Adhesives. Uh, I mentioned in a previous video that I haven't had a lot of luck with CA glue other than sticking my fingers together, but this one, the O3A, thick viscosity together with the spray accelerator are working really well for me. You can get them in medium and thin viscosity as well as a black variant too. And at around £13 for the adhesive and £12 for the accelerator, they do cost a little bit more than the does what it says on the tin variety, but I'm very happy to pay that for a product that actually sticks what it's supposed to instead of just sticking me to myself. As I said at the start, this is one of those things that was gifted to me and a number of other people that make a central this year, and I've been out and bought some more of my own because it really is that good and it works that well for me. You may have seen me using some coloured MDF recently, Finsa Fibre Colour, the same as I bought for my bench tops and my NFT tops here, but I appreciate that not everyone can get their hands on the material. So I've been playing with these chestnut spirit stains recently. They come in a few different colours in 100, uh, excuse me, 250 millimetre bottles for about 16 to 17 pounds per colour. Or you can get a sample pack with all nine colours at around £28. Bear in mind that the colours go a long way, so these may well be all you need for a smaller project. Spirit stains are alcohol-based, so they go on evenly and they dry really fast. But if you prefer a water-based dye, then take a look at the Hampshire Sheen Intrinsic Colours. Again, there's a sample pack of all 11 colours that they do, plus a Danish oil for about £35 or so, so well worth a look if you fancy adding a splash of colour to your woodwork. Uh, next up is a really simple little hinge jig from my YouTube pal Robin Clevert. Uh, if you're in the trade fitting doors into liners on new builds all day long, there are lots of jigs that will help you swing a door and you've probably got a solution for that already. But if you're renovating or refurbishing a property where you're fitting new doors into existing frames, then an individual jig like this one is a huge time saver. You could, of course, make your own. I did that back in the day, but at £27.50 for one that's been lovingly screwed together by Robin himself, then I think I'd probably just buy one. These are available in 76 millimeter sizes like this one, or 102 millimeters, that's three inches and four inches, either the jig alone or in a bundle with a bearing guided route of it, direct from Robin Clevert's site, link down below as always. So the Dave Stanton dog locks are a simple way to accurately locate a guide rail onto an MFT style bench to give you precise cuts in a way that's really easy to also disengage the rail from the MFT and take it elsewhere to use off the bench without having to remove the dogs. Uh, they're also flexible enough to work with a variety of different bench dog sizes, so it doesn't really matter whether you've got three quarter inch dogs or 20 mil or some other size that you've made yourself, the dog lock will still work fine. Dave, of course, is in Australia, and one of the biggest issues for us smaller product makers is that shipping costs can kill some sales stone dead. So I'm delighted to say that Dave has teamed up with friend of the channel, Stu Parker, to manufacture these and fulfill orders from within the UK. So at just 26 pounds or thereabouts with free UK shipping, that makes them a much better prospect for us over on this side of the globe. I'd also like to give a quick shout out to Stu Parker Creations as well. Stu makes the guide rail bar attachment for my DIY rail hinge, and he also makes the 18 mil guide bush for the Festool OF1010 for use with the 10 minute workshop loose tenon jigs. Uh, he also makes emergency stop paddles and zero clearance plates for my bandsaw. So go and check out Stu's Etsy store, links down below. And next is the Rail Stay, a £29 guide rail accessory from Sixpence Industries. What do you know? Another small British company aimed 
mostly at the construction industry, but also of interest to home renovators too. It's designed as a way to fix a guide rail to the top board of a stack that's on edge. You know what it's like working in a small space. You have a stack of boards leaning against the wall, plasterboard, OSB, cladding, whatever. But you can't get a rail clamp in there and you may not have space to lay them flat to cut them. Well, the rail stay works by having a fixed spike at one end and a movable one at the other. You can line it up pull the fixed spike into the edge of the board and fix it in place with the movable one. Of course, with a plunge saw, you have precise control over the depth of cut, so you won't damage the next board down. And even if you have the space to stack the boards flat in a construction environment with more dust in the air, it means that you probably won't get the guide rails being as grippy as they usually are. And given the price of materials these days, 29 pounds is probably money well spent to avoid a ruined cut. We're going up a step in price now to £45 with the Glowforce iLight. Glowforce is a small British company and the iLight is a 1000 lumen task light that has IP65 water protection rating. It charges over micro USB, has a USB-A outlet so it can be used as a power bank and as well as the usual full brightness and flashing lamp settings. It also has a half power setting that gives a seven hour runtime. The lamp has quarter inch threads in the back and side for tripod mounting and a couple of strong magnets on the back as well. For £60 you can get the lamp of the metal stand, the magnetic base and rubber gooseneck. And the magnetic base in particular is very good. I've actually been using it as a camera mount. And if you do do that, I'd recommend using a small rig magic arm as well, as they have one and a half kilos of load rating. There's links to all that stuff down below, of course. There's also accessories available from Glowforce like phone and iPad holders, or the mag base with a ball joint. And it's great to see these kinds of products. I'd have loved to have had something like this in the back of my my van back in the day. Uh, £45 for the plane lamp, £60 for the kit, they come recommended. Also at around £60, these are the new Bessie horizontal fixture clamps. These perform the same sort of function as the old Festool fixed clamps or clamping elements as they used to be called. They're MFT clamps that grip the side of a board. The Bessie clamps have one crucial difference though, not that they cost less than the Festool, though they certainly do, is that they clamp the board without making it lift off the surface. This is one of the main complaints about the Festool clamps. They're great as hold downs for sanding, but with that little lift that you get as you tighten the clamp, it would always cause issues on a glue-up and you just don't get that with the Bessie clamps. The Bessie clamps apply a lot of pressure, so no issue at all with the glue-ups. And if you're in the market for this type of MFT clamp, the Bessies with a street price of between 60 to 70 pounds for a pair are definitely well worth a look. And finally, no 10 minute workshop gift list is complete without some shameless self-promotion. So let me just remind you that the loose tenon jigs, the shelf pin router jigs, and all the digital plans for the guide rail hinge, the portable bench, and many other projects are still available at 10minute.shop where you can also redeem Etsy gift vouchers. Or do consider the gift of membership. 10 minute workshop plus is my new independent members area. And there are gift cards available at 10minuteworkshop.com to redeem against membership. We'd love to have you on board and taking part uh, that's it for this one though. Thanks ever so much for taking a look. Be sure to join me next week when I'll be pulling apart the router bench again. <laughs> Take care. Hey, hope you're well. I'm doing one of those things that needs like double jointed arms or something. arms that are three feet long. So about a year ago I took out my Triton router when I rebuilt my router bench and I fitted a new torsion box bench and the Sander Shop milling motor and lift. And in this video, I'm changing that. Now, I want to be absolutely clear that there's no issue, no kind of problem at all with the Souter router and lift. The change is for something else altogether. In fact, the router milling motor 
and left have been absolutely flawless and I would have no problem whatsoever continuing to use them. It kind of begs the question, why am I changing it?